so that peace and happiness, unity and justice may be established amongst us all. Amen. Please be seated. Madigan City Council acknowledges the Wurundjeri people as the traditional custodians of the land we now know as Manningham. We pay our respects to Wurundjeri elders past and present and value the ongoing contribution to the cultural heritage of Manningham. Manningham Council would also like to acknowledge the contribution made to Manningham over the years by people of diverse cultures and backgrounds. I welcome all members of the public here tonight to this council meeting. In particular, I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the YMCA Youth Advisory Council, who have come along tonight to observe proceedings. Now they went for dinner, so they might be coming a bit late. I can assure you that they are coming because we met with them this morning, uh, just previously to this meeting, so they'll be here shortly. The Youth Advisory Council program involves young people who, who will live, study and work in Manningham who have an interest in making a positive impact in their local community. I would also like to recognise and welcome former councillors Meg Downey and Stephen Main to tonight's meeting. Welcome. I'd like to advise those present that tonight's meeting is being audio and video recorded. All care will be taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in a public gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event that your voice or your image is broadcast. All council meetings are controlled by a meeting procedure, local law. Sorry. 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 Sorry on the item before opening any debate. Only councillors are able to join the debate on an item. Councillors may adopt the officer's recommendation in the report or propose amendments and supplementary motions or alternate motions. I'd like to draw your attention to item seven on tonight's agenda, public question time, which provides people with an opportunity to ask questions of the council. Questions must be registered prior to the commencement of the meeting to be asked. If we do not have the information at hand to provide a meaningful response, the question may be taken on notice and a response and a response provided in writing. I'd like to stress that I will deal with a maximum of two questions per person and two questions on any one issue. If you have more than two questions, please submit these additional questions in writing to Council through the normal channels. Now we do have quite a number of people who are, wish, who are seeking to ask questions to, at tonight's meeting and one of our public, one of our procedure uh, meeting laws provides that we have um, 30 minutes allotted to questions at, at a public council meeting. So. Uh, we will try and get through all the questioners um, and we'll see, we'll see how we go. Item number two, apologies and requests for leaves of absence. There are no <coughs> apologies. Item number three, prior notification of conflict of interest. There are no prior notifications of conflict of interest. Item number four, confirmation of minutes. Do I have a mover? <coughs> Councillor Dowdley. So sorry. I'd like to move that the minutes of the ordinary meeting of Council are held on the 29th of January 2019 and the special meeting of Council held on 12th February 2019 be confirmed. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a second? I second. Thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item number five, presentations. Item number 5.1, the Australia Day's Honours List. I'd like to acknowledge the following Manningham residents who were recipients of awards in the 2019 Australia Day Honours List. Mr. Kevin Sheedy, AM, Officer AO in the General Division, for distinguished service to Australian rules football as a senior coach and to education and employment programs for young people. 
Miss Sally Goldner, a member of the AN in the General Division. The significant service to the LGBTIQ community through advocacy roles and to the broadcast media. To Miss Coral Deeg, member OAM in the General Division, for service to dance as a choreographer and as a teacher. Dr. Doon Hong, Doncaster, member OAM in the General Division, for service to community health. Mr. Jeffrey Roberts, medal OAM in the General Division, for service to the community of Manningham. And Mrs. Lowell Thompson, medal OAM in the General Division for services to community history. So, we do commend and congratulate those Manningham residents for their awards and it's just an indication of um, how uh, the, the, um, uh, the value and the contribution that this um, community places on civil service. Number, uh, item number six, petitions. There are no petitions. And now we come to public question time, which is item number seven. Now we have, um, we have about eight or nine people seeking to ask questions. Um, we're going to group them in, um, uh, in, a, in issues, uh, but we, for the fir first person who we are going to seek to come to the podium is Mr. Uh, John Biondo. Is Mr. John Biondo here? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Biondo, if you could please come to the podium. Yes. Um, if you'd like to come forward to the microphone, you have two minutes uh, to make a brief introductory statement before asking your questions. Uh, my name is John Biondo. I'm Secretary of the Temple State United uh, Football Club. And we play out of uh, Berlin Park. And my two questions are relating to agenda item 10.2 of tonight's meeting on the Yarra, Yarra River Corridor concept plan. First question is, uh, there are approximately 700 registered soccer players at Temple Star United and the Benetton Social Club that currently have 50% tendency of the oval number one and 100% of the soccer pitches at Bulleen Park. Has Council considered the significant negative impact on patronage levels to these clubs as well as the social club by moving to soccer pitches? And my second question, is there a possibility through the planning process for the, res for the resident clubs to contribute and influence the concept plan put forward to ensure that every impact and implication is considered before acquisition is formed to ensure the operational aspects of the clubs are considered in full? Thank you for your questions, Mr. Biondo. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll make an, intro, um, an introductory comment to your questions um, on behalf of the council, and that is that um, uh, the concept plan is uh, that is before council today is a, is so that council has a position to demonstrate uh, that we require all the space at Bullion Park for our users, and in fact we. To, we, we actually require additional space along the Yarra to accommodate the, the present users of Bullen Park. It is only a concept plan, um, and, um, and for that reason it needs to be flexible, and our officers and our councillors understand that. And many things can happen and can change uh, on this journey uh, uh, we have with the uh, North East Link project. So um, there will be many opportunities to contribute to the planning um, of, 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 um, of, that of that concept. Um, and uh, we've already, in fact, had one forum that I believe that you did attend. I remember meeting you there, yeah. Um, and, uh, but uh, to give more detail and an officer uh, reply as well, I'll direct that question to our Director for City Planning and Community, Mr. Uh, Thank you, Madam Mayor, uh, and through you. Um, John, thanks for your question. Uh, just, just briefly, um, based on the club's uh, ground applications for the coming winter, we can't be, we're aware that the use of the two pitches equates to approximately 30% utilisation rates. So we've taken that into account in our planning. 
consideration was made to, or we did think about, um, to keep soccer at Boeing Park. However, an alternate location for the relocation of the impacted AFL oval, the oval number one, was not feasible outside the Boeing Park area. So we really couldn't find an area where we could accommodate it and meet all the Melbourne standards. Therefore, the option to locate two synthetic soccer pitches at the Pavilion Building and a such a car parking as outlined in the in the draft uh, concept plan that council will consider tonight, um, you know, can fit within uh, the the current um, what's known as the uh, Boeing Golf Driving Range uh, site um, and can become a dedicated uh, soccer facility. Synthetic pitches can also be constructed above the flood level alongside the area on, along uh, Templestowe Road and again in accordance with the relevant uh, facility strategies and standards. So we've tried to factor all those issues. In terms of your second question, Madam Mayor, I think you've, you've covered it. Um, you know, the concept plan that we're presenting to Council tonight is a concept only. There's a lot of work that needs to go on. Um, and continue to go through the, the approval process for this major infrastructure project and the implications of it. Further planning and assessment and approvals will be required to address issues around flooding, land contamination, other planning and uh, environment constraints, the environmental impacts, the cultural heritage impacts, and, and access. I fully understand that. Um, and we will, as the Mayor said, continue to work with all stakeholders during that um, next. Uh, stages of that planning work. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you, Mr. Dean. Thanks. So, um, for the next set of questions, they relate to um, the planning uh, application before Council today at 2 to 4 Old Warrandyte Road. And we have, um, we have four questioners. Um, Maybe I'll start with uh, Mr. Rob McDonald. Um, and <coughs> if you could, Mr. McDonald, if you could come to the podium. Um, as, 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 it, as it is, as these questions are all about the same topic, maybe um, we could have one introduction into uh, the issues at hand before you ask your questions. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, yes, no, I think the, uh, the summary of the issues is set out in the, the detailed uh, detailed list of objections, comprising uh, 75 people. Uh, I have 10 questions. I've narrowed them down to two, as required by Council, which uh, is disappointing, but that's, that, that's a requirement. The first one I had um, is that the proposal in the Council officer's report, quote, exceeds preferred building height policy, but the officers believe it is, quote, a scale and form that responds to preferred neighbour char character. What does this mean and what is the criteria that we use to make this somewhat subjective evaluation on first phase value? Thank I have you. a second question. Do you want to just deal with the first one, Mayor, first? Uh, well, maybe if you could say both questions okay. and then I'll direct the questions to the officer. Fine. Uh, the second question uh, was in relation to traffic impact <coughs> in, in, in relation to the officer's report specifically clause 840. What is the basis for the statement that the proposal can be accommodated without adverse traffic safety or capacity problems? Again, there is no criteria or evidence to substantiate what appears to be a very subjective view. Um, thank you, Mr. McDonald. I'll direct that question to uh, the group manager for approvals and compliance, Mr. Nal Shin. -Shin. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. McDonald, for your question. In assessing the application, officers have considered the suite of both state and local planning policies, in addition to the zones and all layers which affect the site. In recommending the application for approval, officers believe that the proposal on balance satisfies the preferred character of the area by taking into account not only the existing conditions but also the conditions identified in the planning scheme for the future as identified by the residential growth zone. In response to your second query concerning traffic, um, officers uh, during the course of the application engage council's internal uh, traffic experts from our infrastructure team 
and examined the information submitted with the application in detail and are satisfied that the local road has the capacity to accommodate the traffic that will be generated from the project. Yeah. Uh, Mayor, with respect, has just repeated the subjective statements we made in the report and haven't answered my question about what criteria we used, which is something which is of major concern to the residents. So Simply a restatement of the SAC statements in the so report. The, the, the criteria that is used to determine? Both those statements that if point one, exceeding the council's own preferred building height policies is on the basis that it is a scale and form that responds to a preferred neighbourhood character. I asked what that means and what was the criteria. The second one, in much the same line, was a statement the proposal can be accommodated, and these are the exact words the officer used then, without adverse traffic safety or capacity problems. Again, I asked you what criteria was used to make that evaluation, and okay, that's so not answered at all. Okay, so thank you, Mr. McDonald. Maybe you might, might ask Mr. Um, Sheehy what criteria is, is used for both, both in terms of um, neighbourhood character and traffic impact. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. In looking at neighbourhood character, it's important not to just look at one aspect or one part of the planning scheme. It's the, the planning scheme in its entirety that needs to be examined. And when you look at uh, the zones, the purpose of the zone, in particular along this uh, part of um, the, in the municipality, along the main arterial road, the purpose of the zone is to provide higher residential densities. When that's uh, read in conjunction with the DDO, as well as the very subjective and criteria in the local and state planning policy framework. It's the officer's view that the proposal stacks up favorably and hence the recommendation for approval. Mayor, I'd better let somebody else ask a question because clearly I'm not going to give an answer to what I asked. Despite the the very emotive concerns on environment, traffic management and the like in this proposal. Okay, thank you, Mr. McDonald. You may take your seat. I'm, I might ask next, um, well, I've got um, Jo and Lucy Bonavia. 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 You should get that right, shouldn't yep. I? So, um, I'll go up. You'll go up? Yeah, yes, go up. Lucy. Yep. Thank you, Mrs. Bonavia. Okay. Uh, thank you all for allowing me the opportunity to speak. I have two questions, but I'll narrow it down to one. Why did no one from town planning attend these, these, these areas of Old Warrandyte Road and Pine Ridge during peak hour traffic times? Um, no, no, no one was there. Mr. Jonathan Caruso himself confirmed this at the meeting on the 21st. No one has physically been down there during peak hour times to confirm our con concerns. No one's been there. Why? Thank you for the question, Mrs. Bonavia. I might direct that question to Mr. Uh, Niall Sheehy. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And thank you, Mr. Ms. Bonavia, for your, thank your you. question. Thank yeah. you. Um, as I, I uh, identified in my previous comment, uh, in assessing the application, planning officers, Mr. Crusoe, refer the matter to our in-house traffic experts, our traffic engineers. But so why would he and state no one, well, no one was there at peak hour times? Uh, I think that comment was in regards to his presence during peak hour times. And oh, it might mean nobody else either. And not our traffic engineers. Our traffic mm. engineers are very familiar with the traffic in this area in peak hour times. And we've sought, so and we have sought advice from them. Well, if I may say so, sir, I'd like you to be there when we try and get in and out of our, our uh, driveways. And we'd like to get out of Pine Ridge because we have no other access except on Old Warren Dive Road. And when they're zooming down, you can wait there 10 minutes, sir. You're not there to see that. You're, you've assessed it on your assumption, whatever it is. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Bonavilla. Yeah. Um, now, would Mr. Um, would Mr. Joe Bonavilla like to ask a question or two? My name is Joe Bonavia. I suppose we need to be well aware that there are no five-storey apartments along Doncaster Road, from Blackburn Road all the way up to Springville Road. 
Not even the proposed Tunstall Square redevelopment plans have anything beyond three storeys. The supposed views uh, from the top two levels of this proposed apartment are nothing spectacular. And in the main, the view will be that of rooftops and car park of Tunstall Square shops, plus traffic going up and down Mitcham Road. To this end, we would like to ask, ask the following pertinent questions. Why build an apartment, a five-storey apartment in this location? Most uh, high-rise apartments were supposedly to be located down at the Doncaster uh, precinct, the Doncaster Hill precinct. Why is some planning giving the green light <coughs> to a five-storey apartment that ignores the important objectives of the planning scheme DDOA when they agree to the fact the proposal exceeds the preferred building height and the number of stories allowed. Why we're setting a new height precedent and foregoing the neighbourhood character of this area. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bonavia. I'm going to direct that question to Mr. Nashi. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Yes, and thank you, Mr. Mr. Thank you. I will speak up and thank you, Mr. Bonavia, for your question. In assessing this application, it's important to identify that there are limited areas in the municipality for residential growth of this density. This particular area along the main arterial road has been identified by the planning scheme as being appropriate for this level of density and this, this number of stories. Yes, you are quite right in identifying that it exceeds the preferred height. Those heights and the number of stories are discretionary and provides officers and council the ability to assess an application exceeding the standard height requirements. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Bonavia. There's one more question on this topic, and that's um, <coughs> Ms. Annabelle Milonis. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and Councillors, for listening to my two minutes and my questions. So. I want to just reiterate in, uh, what has been said by the, um, the residents here that the two major issues that we have with this planning permit is that of the height and the needless requirement of five levels. Um, the day that I registered my objection to this plan, that I actually looked at 10 pages of permits and there was only five and they were up here at Doncaster Hill that actually had higher than three levels. So we don't agree with you over there. Um, sorry, I've forgotten your name, Councillor. Um, we don't agree with the fact that it is in keeping with what the residential um, uh, residents want and, and we think it's needless. The other thing is that um, my two questions relate to this in the fact that if I draw you your attention to Facebook and to the Manningham and Warrandyte um, community hub page and the amazing amount of um, concern with regards to lack of parking for these high rise buildings specific, specifically up here. So my questions are, has there been consideration from Council as to what you're going to do with the parking congestion for visitors' car parking? And I realise that there's going to be 60 car parks um, and there, there was not a definite answer of eight um, visitor car parks within this complex. And so what are you going to do with Tunstall Square? It's already, it's already very, very congested, so the visitor parking is of issue. And the other thing is that the applicant the other night at the permit meeting actually said that they had an independent traffic person. The traffic congestion is the biggest concern for all these residents here. And they said that they haven't applied to Vic Roads because Vic Roads would say that if you've got an alternate access, then they wouldn't uh, allow that entrance off that building to come onto Doncaster Road or Mitcham Road. And I asked council, is there a possibility that we can get an independent assessor to actually go to Vic Roads and apply for that? Hence the reason, I mean, because every other along here, they all come out on Mitcham Road and Doncaster Road. So why would we congest Old Warrandyte Road, which is extremely congested? And I, and I, yeah. And I'd just like to say, you know, these residents, we're all very concerned about this. It's not about the development, it's about the height, and it's about, which isn't in keeping with a livable, sustainable community like your strategic plan says. And the other thing is the traffic congestion off Old Warrandyte Road. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Malonis. Um, I'm going to direct that question to the officer. So, uh, Mr. Sheehy is an officer of, of, of 
Council. Yep. Um, and this planning application will be uh, debated and determined later on yep. in the agenda by the by the councillors yep. here at the table. Thank so, yep. Yep. so I'll just Thank direct you. your questions. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mullins, for your question. Uh, in response to uh, your concerns about uh, traffic, um, it's normal practice for big roads to, when a, a site is located on a major arterial road, to not grant access if another option is available. In this case, the application was referred to big roads, and they indicated that uh, they supported the current arrangement. Subsequent to the meeting that was held last week, officers contacted Vic Roads and inquired with them whether or not it would entertain direct access from Mitcham Roads. The Vic Roads applied, responded to advise that it would not. <coughs> In response to your uh, concern about uh, visitor parking, the proposal provides a number of spaces in excess of the spaces that council yep. can require. Yeah, which is eight extra. Yep. <coughs> so, but eight, eight extra for 35 units. So we're going to have a visitor problem. And the other thing is, if that's really good. Thank you for taking that to Vic Roads after the permit meeting. Can I ask then, can Vic Roads come out and assess the safety of Old Warrandyte Road at peak times for pedestrians, for major school children and pedestrians that are using that major bus hub and, and then deem that it's okay that this traffic is congested on Old Warrandyte Road because you were posing a risk to the people that are pedestrians by not coming onto many on onto Mitcham Road. Okay, so Mrs. Mullins, that's, yeah, that's your anyway. third question. Sorry, but I will I'll exercise my discretion and I will direct that to the officer yeah. um, to answer. Um, and um, but before I do, with the eight parking um, visitor parking spots, we don't as a council have the capacity to ask for more because that's a state planning. Um, um, law. Yeah, and I that. Yeah, yeah, so we we feel your frustration yeah. and we share it with you. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Sheedy. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'll just follow up on the, the, the question. Um, I certainly can't uh, talk on behalf of the board. That's a question you probably need to ask them. Uh, however, Council's uh, in house uh, infrastructure team are satisfied that uh, once this, if the proposal will generate additional traffic. Uh, 245 trips a day. Additional yes. traffic uh, that uh, the, the, the local road system has capacity to accommodate for additional traffic. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, yes, and that planning application will be debated later in the meeting. Thank you. So um, that's the end of the questions with, with respect to that planning application. I'm, I'm now going to turn to Mr. J uh, Joseph Wilson who has a question on landscaping. Mr. Joseph Wilson here. Yes. Is your question also about Warrandyte Road? It is. Oh, okay, because it wasn't referred yeah. to here. Sorry. Oh. That's good. I'm glad new, I chose you next. New to the format. Didn't know what to actually fill in. Uh, I was hoping that I was going to be able to talk to notes. Um, but that's okay. Well, you've got two minutes to introduce it. Yeah. All right. Um, <coughs> There has been a landscape presentation for this particular site and uh, that's really what I'm going to query. Firstly, councils stipulate that the landscaping should be a landscape that will respect the landscape character of the neighbourhood. It encourages a planting that enhances the natural habitat for plants, animals and insects. Um, now, as you will all know, uh, most will anyway, that all plant life basically on this site, mature trees and shrubs have been removed and one would like to know why. Uh, as of 18 months ago there were two pine trees, established pine trees, there was in actual fact uh, a, a cedar, a cedrus a deodara, uh, there was also two native eucalypts. Uh, they have been removed in the last 18 months. Uh, so one suspects things, that's all. All right, but the landscape plan for this site does not fit into the local uh, habitat requirements of this area. And that is really what my question is about. 
can this be altered, this landscape plan? Because firstly, they've put in six feature trees, which is great. They'll look good, but they won't grow in this area. Firstly, because they're what are known as Angophora costata, which is, uh, you know, because I'm a botanist, I can come up with botanical names, but I've got to come up with common names for you. Sydney, um, Sydney, what do they call it? Uh, Sydney red gum, right? We all know our own red gum, but we possibly don't know the, the Sydney red gum. Now this tree <coughs> grows normally on sandstone and would look great if they grow here. They'll be lovely feature trees, but they're not local. Right? They're not local trees. And I'm saying, why can't we have a good local tree as a feature tree? And my <coughs> suggestion would be Eucalyptus meliodora, the, the yellow box which most of us know. Right? Uh, then I look at the rest of the planning generally, and I'm saying, there is a heck of a lot of plants going into this site. 1,250 plants. Most of them are fill. They are just to make the place look green, but they're not local plants. They will need a heck of a lot of watering. There are things like lily pillies, uh, Acmenia smithi in long rows they will do the job but they're not local and they will not that will help the possums the possums will love them uh, but there's no diversity there's no um, what you call plants for the locals you know bird life that we wish to encourage into this area. All right, so thank you, Mr. Thank Wilson. You. Um, no, stay, stay there because I'm going to direct your question about landscaping again to uh, Mr. Kevin Sheehy. Oh, Mr. No, no, no. Kevin Sheehy. Uh, I'd, I'd be very <laughs> good to be a man. You just you and how are you? <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor, and uh, thank you, Mr. Wilson, for your comments and uh, for sharing your expertise. Um, condition uh, 11 of the planning program requires an amended landscape plan to be provided. That landscape plan can take into account what we've heard tonight and will be reviewed by Council's landscape <coughs> architect to ensure the appropriate outcome, including species that will take this from this hopefully little or no maintenance in the future. Yeah. Could I just add to that that they be sourced locally rather than what this crowd are going to do? They will bring in 40 litre, 50 litre pots of plants this high. Rather than that, get something local. You don't have to go two metres high, one metre high for a plane. Uh, yes. They can sit yeah. in beautifully. Mr. Mr. Wilson, yeah. I'm quite confident that our powers don't extend that far. <laughs> That's a great idea. So thank right. you very much for your questions. Okay. All right, we have two more questions on two different issues. And I'll, I'll, I'll first ask uh, Miss uh, Stella Ye to Ye. <coughs> to come to the, um, the podium. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for having me here. My name is Stella Yee, and I'm a resident in the city, but I also must disclose that I'm a candidate in the next um, upcoming federal election. And my question is, um, in our mail today, um, we all received this card from the current May, um, MP for Menzies, um, Mr. Danny, um, Kevin Andrews, informing us that he has secured funding for 10 million to fix Fitzsimmons uh, Lane. Um, as we all know, the Victorian state government has already started on the process of upgrading Fitzsimmons Lane. So when I call them to ask them what this money is about and what, how does it fit in with the current plan that the state has put in place since last year, um, no one could tell me because they, they don't know themselves and they are not able to ascertain how it fits in with the upgrade plans that is already underway. Um, so um, I'd like to ask the council, as Fitzsimmons Lane lies mostly in the city of Manningham, I'd like to ask the council whether you could um, inform us um, what you know about this $10 million that is supposed to, um, the planning is supposed to begin immediately and is supposed to ease congestion through Nilambic and Manningham, the two cities. And uh, I, if I also may add that um, the lady pictured in this um, pamphlet 
is the current mayor of Nilambik Council. So if they have a little bit of a uh, Fitzsimmons Lane and you seem to know about it, I'd like to know what the Manningham Council could tell us about this $10 billion dollars and what they're planning to do. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Yee. Yes, we, we have made some inquiries through our CEO, um, so I will direct that question to Mr. Day. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you for the question. Now, at this stage, we actually haven't received any further information ourselves in relation to uh, the funding um, announcement other than um, it is meant to address um, issues of congestion in and around that Fitzsimmons Lane area. So I can't shed any more light on it other than the announcement that's uh, on um, Kevin's website um, and has come out through the media. Thank you. Thank you. Right, and the um, last question, of, uh, this is Meg Downey, former, former councillor of Manningham. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, just before I start, I, when you called Noel Kevin Sheedy, I didn't hear you not, you say that Kevin Sheedy was also given an, an award in this journey, Daddy. Was that mentioned? Yes, it was. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, well, okay. All right, my apologies. That's it. Okay. Um, last Friday, I became aware that councillors were not receiving my emails. I was informed that all my emails to council addresses had been blocked in October. My access was reinstated that afternoon, so clearly it was unjustifiable. The last time I know of someone being blocked, they were informed by registered post and still had access to the CEO. I was just cut off. How wrong is this? If memory serves me correctly, action was taken against the council and a payout was made. Because of this block, none of my own issues or those related to community organisations were delivered. Is this fair? I had arrangements with Donna Russ to submit an article from the Donvale Hill Produce Club about our Cup Day picnic for publication in Manningham Matters. It didn't get through. Is this fair? On behalf of my Produce Club, I sent emails to Gaynor Florence about the SIP Community Meal Support Program. Once more, she didn't get them, and I didn't know she hadn't. Is this fair? More recently, on behalf of FOMDAC, I've been trying to get some information about water issues at the Dog Activity Centre. My emails weren't going through, nor were the ones I, would, I sent about window furnishings, which had been removed by council in the building lease by FOMDAC. Is this fair? This month, I've been trying to get back the bond, the Menzies ALP FEA, paid for the use of Ted Ajani Hall for our ALP candidate, Stella Yee. I sent details three times, but of course, information didn't get through. It is now three weeks and there is no sign of the money. Is this fair? Lastly, on a personal level, none of my emails and submissions have been delivered. I won't go into details as some of them are of a confidential nature. Is this fair? So I would like to know how some underling could take it upon themselves to block me, who did it, and on whose authority the buck stops at the top. How many other residents were, are blocked without their knowledge? How can this can be prevented from happening in the future? And lastly, how does council plan to address this and how will they compensate, compensate me for this grave misjustice of, uh, miscarriage of justice? Thank you, Mrs. Downey, for your question. Uh, the councillors, all nine councillors, have been briefed as to what happened. And on behalf of the council, I do apologise for what has happened. Um, it was a technical error, an administrative error that was not in any way intentional. I understand that you have had discussions with our CEO. Um, and to further clarify uh, my answer, I'm going to direct that question as well to our CEO, Mr. Andrew Day. Thank you, Mayor. Um, and again, we apologise for the inconvenience, because you have been inconvenienced um, by this administrative error. Um, the circumstances of it were that um, uh, a number of individuals uh, did uh, request that they no longer receive emails from you. That went through the right administrative channels, as I've outlined um, to you, to put that in place. Unfortunately, what occurred was that your emails were indeed blocked um, 
uh, right across the organisation. Um, we discovered this, uh, like yourself, on Friday as well, moved to rectify that, and obviously we'll um, review that and make sure that um, from an administrative perspective we've got the right protocols and procedures in place to manage it into the future. This doesn't explain who authorised it and who did it. Those are the questions I want to know. Yes, it couldn't, someone couldn't have just woken up and decided to, to block me yes, to every yes, council, of, council yes. of email. It and someone a, couldn't have decided. Order. order. It, Mrs Downey, it was a technical error. It was an unintentional error done by an administrative officer. It wasn't intentional. These things happen and we really do apologise. So if you could now take your seat. How many other appreciated. people was a subject to this? Uh, to my knowledge, no other person was... Uh, it, when the technical officer was doing the, uh, uh, the exercise, it was only in relation to you. So if that's so... So I was told no he just woke up and, and, and decided so to... Sorry, if you could take your seat, that would be much appreciated. You've had your two minutes and your two questions and you've and we have answered your question and apologise. So I would be most grateful... Well, I, I would like to seat. have a meeting with the CEO as he suggested yesterday. OK, fine. We, we, that, that will occur. Thank you, Mrs Downey. So I now move to item number eight, which, are, which is admissions of urgent business, and there are no items of urgent business. And now I move to item number nine, which is planning permit applications. Okay. Item number 9.1, planning application PLN 18 slash 0562 of 24 Old Warrandyte Road, Donvale, for the construction of the five-storey apartment building comprising 35 dwellings, two levels of associated basement parking, and alteration of access to a road in a road zone category one. Do I have a mover? Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I move that the recommendation be adopted with the following amendment under the heading construction management plan for 3.6 element A6 amended to read. 3.6 element A6, traffic and parking management must demonstrate that traffic conditions and amenity of the area will not be adversely affected from but not limited to the parking of trade persons vehicles during the construction and movement of heavy vehicles to and from the site, which must avoid where practical peak traffic periods in the morning and evening. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Galvalee. Would the mover like to speak? I would, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I was, I attended the submitters meeting uh, last week, and at that particular meeting I undertook to the residents who expressed their concern quite clearly at the meeting that I would put forward to my fellow councillors uh, a summation of their object objections on behalf of myself and Councillor Chan, who was always in also in attendance. We did that. We provided a complete list of the, uh, the issues that the residents raised to my fellow councillors. But in the end, um, having listened to all of those concerns, I do not find myself in a position to refuse this application. The reality is that our planning scheme is a very large and complex document. It's over 1,200 pages long. There are many overlapping and conflicting clauses within this planning scheme. It's a very complex issue. And when I look at an application like this, and I look at my own experience in fighting applications at various levels in our community, and they're in this chamber for six years, I can, I can draw on information and knowledge that I have learnt during that time. My classic piece of information within this is indeed the VCAT decision that was made for the site on the corner of Blackburn Road and Doncaster Road. Now this is a particular decision that our council opposed quite determinedly. The community opposed it. We took it all the way to VCAT and we got rolled. And VCAT approved the building that has a height of between 14.7 and 16.35 metres along Blackburn Road. The building reaches a maximum height of 18.3 metres on this particular corner. But it steps down to 
in two in sections down to the edges of the building where it interfaces with the neighbouring properties. The reality is that when the planning scheme says preferred height, as it did in this location, same zoning, exact same zoning on a busy intersection, that is the sort of decision that VCAT delivers you. Despite the objections from the councillors and despite the objection from the officers and despite the objections from the community, we as a council have to implement the controls that are in the planning scheme. We do not have the discretion to simply take what's in the planning scheme, ignore it and refuse applications. If we do that, we are being derelict to our community because we represent the whole community and we have to do it in a financially responsible way. We, are, we have to be stewards of, the, of community value here. The problem here is that this particular zoning is in place and every property owner has the entitlement to apply for development in accordance with the planning scheme that impacts that site. I have looked extensively through this particular proposal and I struggle to see where it doesn't comply with the planning scheme rules as, it, as they are crafted. If you put this application forward two years ago, you would have been required under the planning scheme to have a certain amount of parking. You would have been required to have visitor car parking two car parking spaces for every three or bigger be bedroom apartment, one for every two or smaller. The state government, late last year, pushed through an amendment which removed all of that. No visitor car parking is required. The state government controls parking for apartment buildings. It's as simple as that. We have no power to affect it, and we, any proposal which seeks to adjust this will simply get rolled at VCAP. It will. It is a complete waste of time and money for us to oppose it on that basis. We cannot. I looked at all of the, the, the various cr the criteria that apply to this building and I cannot see a basis for rejecting it. Even the fifth floor. That fifth floor is set back 13 metres from Old Warrandyte Road and 10 metres from Mitcham Road. It's on the front section of the building facing the, the intersection and at the rear, it's set back 20, 30 metres. I don't know how far away it is from the residence. This is a prominent location on a busy intersection and that fifth floor fronts that intersection. I can see no rational argument and no planning argument that could refuse that and I cannot see v VCAT overturning it. The reality <coughs> is that this proposal complies with the planning scheme and with DDO Act that applies to the front block and with the GRZ which applies to the rear block. It's 10 metres on the rear block. It's set back extensively from the rear boundaries. If we look at the first and second levels, I think uh, we will find that it's set back quite generously to number six, Old Warrandyte Road. Level three has only eight dwellings. It's set back even further. Level four has only two dwellings and it covers 31% of the building. In the end, councillors, I believe this particular application, despite the concerns of the residents, is a, is, should be approved because it complies. In terms of traffic, I asked the organisation to approach Vic Roads in terms of um, entrance onto Doncaster Road. That was done on behalf of the residents and Vic Roads said, no way. And that is in keeping with all of the other decisions we've seen. There's nothing we can do to overturn this. If we were to waste council, council money fighting the MVPAT, we would simply lose. We can't fight everything. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? No, I would just like to support Councillor Paul McLeish's um, response. And I would just like to also add that um, uh, this building itself is actually allowed for some architectural um, um, niceties, I suppose. It's, it's, it's allowing for the visual uh, impact of it to be um, uh, less invasive with the planting and hopefully with more um, native trees than what we've, what we've heard of. Um, and, uh, and as a council, we are required to look at diversity of uh, housing. This, uh, this actually provides it and it is on the main road and we, uh, we will be hard up against the cat to ever try and um, knock this if we knock this back now. So um, I think we've, we've got a pretty good design. I know it's not the height limit that uh, local residents want, but the thing is it does comply. 
and um, and traffic. And I, uh, yeah, well, everyone has to deal with traffic. Oh, oh. All right. So that's so can, I just, can I just have order in the chamber, please? Because it's only the councillors that are debating this point. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you may continue, yeah. Councillor Galbally. Um, and, and there is, there is a sort of a, a belief that everyone wants it not in their backyard, and it is, does happen. And we are doing our best to ensure that uh, we are covering our uh, environmental um, environment uh, as, as far as we can. And if if if, uh, if we were forced to knock this back for any reason. What could happen is that this applicant can actually go back to Vic and actually ask for something even um, more stringent, more dislikable, and um, and just build a box. So I, I support it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Galway. Are there any speakers against the motion? Are there any other speakers? I'll put the motion. Oh, Councillor Goff, would you like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And I rise to speak in uh, support of this particular motion uh, for the development on that corner. Many years ago, 10, 15 years ago, perhaps even getting up to 20, Manningham went out to the community, we had to cater for higher density in the area, and we went out and we came up with a scheme that was advertised, introduced 15, 20 years ago, that pointed out that areas around shopping centres and areas along our main roads were the areas that we're going to focus the higher density. In exchange for that, we've got benefits on what could be done on the normal residential areas. And we've got limits on what could be done on the normal residential areas. And so therefore, along those main roads and along around shopping centres, we said that is where that higher density is going to go. We were forced to actually come up with this. And indeed, that is along that plan. It is on the main road and and in those areas, rather than appearing somewhere in the back block with other suburban houses, uh, having 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 this sort of development without the feeding of public transport of, of, of the, the main road and whatever. So as you notice that this zoning is uh, is not necessarily when you talk about neighbourhood character. We're talking about a future character in these places not an existing character. It takes into consideration what is existing around, but because it is in a DAOA area, it is an area marked for great change. You can't have the same if you're having great change. It is designated on the title of that property that it is there for high density. And that's what it is for. And when we talk about uh, multi-story buildings, we're not talking about four or five story buildings. <coughs> In the terms of the state government, that's a medium development. Probably 15, 20, 10, 15, 20, you start to talk about high rise. So there are no real high rises as in such. In Whitehorse, they're starting to come in. But the governments are asking for us to allow these sorts of developments. They enforce it into our planning scheme. And indeed, it actually fits. So as a councillor, if I read through that report and all the criteria, not just for the DDOA area, but also for the residential one area are met, how can I stand up and say, oh, I, I don't like it? We need to follow through on what our policies are. They are what they are. And if they fit, they fit. And questions were asked before, Madam Mayor, about what criteria and whatever. It comes down to the judgment and yes, it is subjective, a judgment of the officer who writes a report independently from councillors, and that report is what is taken to VCAT. I don't care what VCAT do with an application. It really has no interest in, in, in me in what VCAT do with something. But what does have interest for me is how can I stand here and say that this development meets all the criteria for a tick and say no? If I want to say no to that, and my job is probably too large of that is to change the state government's and that's the our, our, our planning scheme and the state government's policies and perhaps it may then open up the whole area of Manningham for these sorts of developments in back streets. 
So Madam Mayor, I support this motion. Thank you, Councillor Goff. And there are other speakers. Councillor Zach Roberts. Madam Mayor, um, I do agree with uh, my fellow councillors. Uh, I think they have expressed uh, the limitations we have as a council. However, I think it is important, uh, Council Goff uh, mentioned that when you get a report and we have full trust, uh, and I particularly have no problem whatsoever with the integrity of our officers and the confidence they display. However, uh, you get a report and you see ticks everywhere, you have almost no option to, have to accept it. Sometimes we don't, we question it. In this particular case, there are six conditions that are not met and uh, are written as considered met. They include uh, the minimum lot size, level three exceeds 75%, which is 88%. Building setbacks are not all met. Uh, Apartment 1 or 8 does not comply with 40 square meters and the 5 meters minimum is 35 or whatever it is. <coughs> Maximum building height, whilst we have the discretion, it's not met. So it doesn't make us look good. It doesn't create a notion of transparency, a trust. It, it gives me a lot of discretion. Uh, discretion which is not fully explained and perhaps that could minimize the opposition uh, if uh, somehow we tighten, tighten our policies in a way that people understand the constraints that we operate under. Um, thank you, Councillor Zakropoulos. Oh. Councillor Dot Haynes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Look, um, this application has been around for a while, since the start of 2018. As the um, Chair of Sustainable Design, I have seen it and, and, and watched it through the processes. We get a list when they're first um, listed, so our officers keep us well informed along the process. And there's been a lot of um, further information required from the officers to get to this point. Um, and seeing it through Sustainable Design and the process that it went through, um, I have um, we all have continued to have many concerns, but um, I have no other um, reason to not uh, approve this plan as it sits today for someone that actually does sometimes go to VCAT and watch some of these hearings as an observer and see that the um, VCAT actually recently told me that Manningham Council and Stonington Council are the two councils that stand out at VCAT more than any others. Um, so um, it's, it's, it's quite obvious that uh, there is a lot of money being spent on VCAT and to actually take this to VCAT, um, I think that uh, we would be doing a detrimental service to um, the residents and wait, spending even more money um, um, to achieve um, a, probably a worse outcome because the... Um, the, the applicants often go and ask for more than the process that, that's been happening right now. And my concern is mostly for the personal effect of people and the amenity. I've seen people be totally destroyed uh, after hearing at VCAT that the amenity issues and the things that they were trying to put forward through justifying their understanding of the planning scheme. So I'm glad I'm not a planner. I'm glad that I don't fully understand it because I know that I too would be quite disturbed um, by these things occurring and I do see these things being built all the time. So as a councillor for many years now, I've um, been able to assess based on the situations and I often think that the enforcement of the state government is something that we, uh, um, some, we are unable to fight, unfortunately, and, and this is one of those things that the state government is enforcing things on us that we have no say in, and I feel for every council that's going through that, especially Manningham and Stonington. Uh, thank you, Councillor Haynes. 
Now, Councillor McLeish, I'm going to give you the option to close if you wish, although that, yeah. Councillor, can I ask a question? Yes. Oh, yes. Councillor Common, you wish to ask a question. So my question is, uh, I understand the Old Warrenboat Road is a council road, and I, I sympathise with the um, with the concerns about traffic on that road. So my question is, what is there anything we can do as a council to address the traffic issues on Old, Old Warrenboat Road? I know that road, and I think a lot of it stems from the fact that Springvale Road is blocked up and people are taking um, a right. uh, circular road. So my, that's my question, is is there anything that Council can do? Yes, I'll direct that question to... Well, I'll take that on notice. Okay. Okay, um, now I'm going to exercise... I don't think there's any speakers against the motion, but nevertheless, Councillor McLeish, I'm going to exercise my discretion and let you close. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think my fellow councillors have summed up fundamentally the issues that we are challenged with. There are many in our community who would ask us to, on the weight of objections, to oppose development. It happens constantly in this chamber. And it's an invidious challenge because in the end, we have, both a, we have a responsibility to the greater community and we have a responsibility to local residents. We can't, in all, good, in all good faith, send out a message to the community that we're going to overturn an application, have it go to VCAT, and believe me, when things go to VCAT, the plans that will go to VCAT will not be these plans, they'll be something else. Uh, if, I would, if, the, if you read the reminder of the developer, the way VCAT works is they are entitled to substitute plans. It will not be these plans if it went to VCAT. They could, for example, remove the eight car parking spaces that are currently there for visitors. And VCAP would give that a tick because that's state government policy. So we need as a community, to be, we need to be, to give our community a realistic understanding of what is possible. The reality is this complies with the planning scheme. It complies with the controls that are in the planning scheme. And we, I can see no basis for us to reject it. And I can't give this community false hope that a, that a case would be winnable by council if I tried to write conditions that opposed this particular development, I couldn't find them. This is on a busy intersection. Old Warren Road Road carries 6,000 vehicles a day in its own right. It's terrible what's happening to that road, but I don't see a solution to it short of big roads actually getting their job done and building Spring Bar Road. And I can't see that happening anytime soon. So, councillors, I ask you to support the application you have before you. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Division. Division. Stand. Those in favour, Councillor Chen, Councillor Zaporopoulos, Councillor Conlon, Councillor Goff, Councillor Haynes, Councillor McLeish, Councillor Kleinert, Councillor Galbally and Councillor Piccinini. Item 9.2, planning application PLN 18 slash 0448 at 39 Green, Brid Green Ridge Avenue Templestone for construction of a three storey building comprising 13 apartments. Do I have a mover? Move as on the paper. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kleiner. Would the mover like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I rise. This is a motion to refuse a development permit. Uh, at this particular address. Uh, again, I suppose it's very pertinent because this particular development is in the back streets. It is in the areas that we're trying to protect. And therefore, coming out of this is a refusal. There are a number of issues for the refusal here, but some of the main ones for this refusal are to do with, I suppose, a the location of that sort of development within those areas. But secondly, um, it's, it's not so much the density, it's a large block. And I'm sure that there will be, this is for 13 apartments, there will be a large number of buildings on it. But the issues are with the setbacks, the set out, and the amenity. And a lot of the amenity talked about in this particular report are the amenity of future people living in, i.e. adequate lighting to bedrooms, 
uh, overlooking and things like that in other areas. There are lots of issues within this development that are not to a satisfaction. And if I were a developer in this particular one, I would have had long, long talks with the, the council officers on making some adjustments because I believe that in the future something will go there, but we can't put this one through at the moment. So council has asked me support to uh, support the officer's motion as on the review. Thank you, Councillor Gough. Would the second you like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think it's an interesting contrast. Um, a hard decision was made in the last application, and um, that's because the planning scheme is the planning scheme. And this is where we're protecting those back streets. Now, this is going to be had because it's uh, for other reasons, it's the past its time. So we're making a decision here that, you know, and again, you know, it goes to VCAT's out of our control. We need to stand united together and protect our planning scheme that is protecting these areas. You know, the main roads at Manningham are for built up. Do I like it? No, I don't like it. Do I, do I like change? No, I don't like this sort of change, but it's there. It's there that we have to live with it. And I'd rather it there in those main streets, how 15, 20 years ago it was designed, um, that it protects the other areas. And, and we've got to hold strong to that and be united um, when applications like this come to before us. I live in an area that's DDI. It is going to change. I live in a dual occupancy, as in two houses on one block. And next door to me, they can build six. Behind me, they can build massive blocks of apartments. And you know what? The planning scheme means that, as much as I don't like it, it's going to happen there. I can't fight that fight that I know will ultimately lose. But I can fight the fight here that I really do believe we can win because we put as much power <coughs> in our planning scheme as we can to protect what we love about Manningham. We as councillors all live here. Some of us, like myself, have been born in Manningham, in every ward. I love this place. I want it to see it protected. I understand, and every resident always says, I understand change is going to come. Yeah, no one likes it in their backyard. And I get that so much. I, I understand that. But this is the application that we need to stand united and we ref uh, go on the office re officer's recommendation and refuse. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Mm. Councillor Haynes. Look, Madam Mayor, I'm not certain if I am speaking against it or for it. I just, um, well, um, I agree with um, Councillor Kleinert's protecting of the back streets and things with our zones. I live in a general residential zone and I've um, supported um, uh, refusals before that have been over developments and I've been watching in VCAT recently that our refusals at Council often end up with being approved by VCAT. Um, so um, I'm... Supported by VCAT. Supported by the cat and actually approved. No, council's not supported by the cat. They actually end up getting through. Um, and I'm um, concerned for this site and where it is and the development that is happening within that area and things. And I have concerns that, um, but uh, but based on the officer's report, I uh, I've been toing and froing over this one as far as whether to support it, but. Um, Councillor Kleinert's passionate plea, I will support this um, refusal, but um, I still believe that protecting the back streets and our planning scheme does not do that well, and VCAT does turn over our refusals often. Thank you, Councillor Hanks. Are there any other speakers? Question? Yes, Councillor Goff. Uh, how many high-rise apartments have been built in back streets in Maine? We will take that on notice, Councillor Goff, because I don't think the officers can well, give you I, exactly I, I, I think that we will be zero uh, high-rise apartments built in, in back streets. And in fact, uh, the developments in the back streets have been protected uh, within that. Yes, you may get a three-storey building, but I will get an actual four-storey house in Bolloon. If I go to some estates there, that there will be four storeys because of the slope of the land or whatever. So, um, and you will get three stores uh, in heights in the industry. So, uh, I, I just want to reiterate here, but uh, if I can have to think, 
uh, that actually uh, this has not been knocked back by its density, it's been knocked back by its design, its placement, and amenity. Thank you, Councillor Croft. Are there any other speakers? I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item 9.3, planning application PLN 18-0772 at Westfield Doncaster, 619 Doncaster Road, Doncaster, for buildings and works for alterations and additions to the existing shopping centre. Do I have a mover? Yes. Councillor Zaporopoulos. I move the recommendation to the doctor. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Haynes. Would the mover like to speak? Yes. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward uh, proposal to upgrade uh, the dining precinct of Westfield, the one that is based in Williamson's and Doncaster Roads. Uh, it is, uh, uh, as I said, uh, a basic proposal. It's always great to uh, receive applications for improvements uh, in our buildings. Uh, Basically, it will uh, it will uh, reinvigorate the uh, dining precinct. It will uh, streamline the uh, the ability of uh, pedestrians from the road to come up to the dining area, uh, and it will uh, beautify the area so that when you come down from the car park at level four, you you have a more pleasant experience. The other thing that they'll do, they'll add. Uh, around about 300 extra seats. But whenever I go to the dining area, it's all the school, so I'm guaranteed uh, for, for a while at least uh, uh, a seat. So I recommend that we support. Thank you, Councillor. Would the seconder like to speak? No, thank you, Madam Mayor. Are there any speakers against the motion? Oh, none of these. Yes, yes you, may, you may. Oh, we have a speaker against the motion? Yes, we do. So I'll let Councillor McLeish speak first. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I have a basic concern with this particular proposal, and I attempted to see if I could get a, an, alt rec an alternative recommendation put together, and after discussion with the officers, I realised I wasn't going to get anywhere with doing it. And I would simply cost the council money trying to defend something that's not really defensible if, if I was successful, and I probably wouldn't be. The basic problem I've got Madam Mayor, is that this particular proposal increases the seating in the dining room by 332 seats. Now, you, when you increase the size of a function space inside a building, you're supposed to provide parking for that increased space. Basic tenant, right? We just saw an application go through where they provided the basic amount of parking. This particular proposal is not providing any increase in parking. In fact, because of the increase in space, and the impact of the changes they're making, we are going to see a net loss of parking of 141 spaces in this particular proposition. So the parking available at Westpac, once this thing is built, Westfield. will be Westfield, sorry, will be 141 spaces less according to the statutory formula. And if there's something that we shouldn't be doing, in my view, it's reducing the parking at Westfield, Doncaster. But We've got a whole bunch of technical challenges that I'm not just not going to go into because it's rather long and boring, but in the end, I don't believe we should be giving Westfield a pass on parking in that site. And if one message I can send out to Westfield loud and clear is I will continue to fight for more parking at that venue and so whilst I'm still on council. I fought very hard to get the parking increased when they put the route through their master plan and we did a reasonable job. We increased the parking. But that's not built yet, and it's not going to be built for quite a while. This is going to result in a net loss. And I suspect this thing might get built before the other stuff does. So this is actually going to, for a period of time, reduce the car parking at that venue if this is the first thing built. That's a shocking outcome. I don't think Westfield should be allowed to get away with it. But I can't see any way under the planning stand to stop them because of the way they've sequenced this. So, councillors, I would much prefer this didn't get up. But we shall see. Thank you, Councillor McLeish. Um, Councillor Chair, please speak. Madam Mayor, when I first saw the, uh, uh, the application, the report, I just feel that it's outrageous to have a net loss of 141 car spacing. 
And uh, I just think that I should be a straight refusal. But when I, when I just try to get the similar regulations, and I found out that I don't have the right to refuse it because actually, in terms of the management planning scheme, they actually prescribe under clause 45.09, restaurant, a car spacing for a restaurant, that is 0.36 spaces per seat. And now that we have under the amendment C104, that probably we all remember that the panel reports that council recently endorsed and the amendment is currently on the minister's table waiting to be approved. And on that amendment, it says 4.17 car spaces per 100 square meters of retail floor area and 3.5 car spaces per 100 square meters of commercial floor area is appropriate. And now um, I want to thank you for the previous council from before me that the master plan is a very generous spaces and that is 4.32 spaces or uh, 100 square meters but now it's down to four still uh, well, it's down to 4.28 but it's still much better than the uh, the uh, for, uh, C104 amendment so I'm disappointed but I have no reason to reject it but I do hope Westfields have common sense because I understand the competition between big shopping centers is for um, and I believe that all shopping centers would like to provide a very pleasant shopping experience for their customers to attract them so they can come back to do more shopping and they can increase their profit and the margin as well. And by providing good shop, uh, good parking experience that <coughs> people will fight for particular car spaces and there will be no, uh, we call it the car park wages, there will be a good experience to start to attract customers. So I just urge Westfields, that's it, and no more other amendments. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Are there any other speakers? No. Would the mover like to close? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Madam Mayor, uh, I, I always consider parking uh, for any application because of the difficulties we have in, uh, in this municipality with uh, the uh, rapid development. However, uh, I was aware, as my other two colleagues that spoke, that uh, this particular application uh, complies with the parking requirements. Not only this, but they do still have a surplus of 730 spaces. So when I saw that this is the case, I thought 730 spaces of surplus, well, that qualifies them to, to get uh, the, uh, the approval of this. So that's right. Thank you, Councillor. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Agenda item 10. City Planning and Community. 10.1. Amendment C117. Manning and Planning Scheme. Rule Rural areas, non-residential uses, consideration of panel report. Do I have a mover? Councillor McLeish. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, I move that Council of Alternative Motion 1 be adopted. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Oh. Councillor Galbally, would the mover like to speak? Would the mover like to speak? I apologise in advance, Madam Mayor. Is it okay? Have five minutes. <laughs> Madam Mayor. <laughs> C117 has three fundamental changes. Two of the changes basically seek to provide additional guidance in the RCZ in a couple of areas. They're covered in the panel report under recommendations two and three. The first of these is outbuildings policy, which is essentially extending a very sensible policy that applies in the low density red zone into the rural conservation zone, the RCZ. It's a great improvement, allow buildings 
outbuildings to occur, but within a clear framework that will control their construction and location and scale. That framework doesn't exist today, so it's a big step forward. The other thing this amendment does, the second thing it does, is non-residential uses in the RCZ. That's clause 22.2, and that seeks to strengthen the language about non-residential uses. What are non-residential uses? Well, some of the things that are allowed in this zone, animal boarding, landscape gardening, restaurant, rural store, secondary and primary schools, these things are all allowable in the zone with a permit. But if you're going to have these sort of non-residential uses, then you need to be able, we need to be able to constrain the scale and the impact of those sorts of developments. And it's precisely those sort of developments that the language is trying to strengthen. Um, when VCAT itself considered the Brumbies Road proposal for a particular restaurant, it made some in principle comments about why that particular application was inappropriate. And those principles that they espoused in their refusal are reflected in this amendment. Those principles speak to things like avoiding road widening, better protecting, protecting habitat, limiting heights of retaining walls, minimising building bulk, keeping development away from ridge lines, designing car parking better, a whole collection of things. And there is a policy paper also being attached to the scheme which reflects that. So for those two particular clauses, the panel report supports those two particular amendments. The other key change is, of course, a complicated one. It's clause 21.07, which amends the MSS, the Municipal Strategic Statement. Um, and in this particular one, it's a bit confusing. The panel's given us a very confusing instruction because this particular clause is amended in a number of ways. There's a whole bunch of little changes in this clause, some of which relate to what the panel has said and some don't. So in the end, an amended version of this clause is actually quite feasible to go ahead because the panel said that we should reject the tourism-related changes to 21.07. Now, that's a very muddy statement. It's not at all clear. If you look at the other two clauses I've already talked about, on one of them they gave us a complete markup version, exactly the wording we should adopt. They changed the council's wording. They gave us a nice clear one, and we're going with that. That's great. On this one, there's the, the, the confident, detailed stipulation, remove the tourism-related changes. Well, I'm sorry, that's just laughable. And it leaves us in a very difficult position because we have to try and figure out what that means. Now in the end, as a council, I don't agree with that recommendation anyway. And the reason I don't agree with it is because the panel report implies that council is just doing this to promote tourism, full stop. They basically say, council is just too pro-tourism and we shouldn't be doing this. Well, it's instructive to look at what we aren't changing in this particular report. When you consider this whole, all the commentary around 21.07 by the panel, it's instructive to consider what we're not changing. So, clause 35.06, the Rural Conservation Zone schedules. This is where the whole Rural Conservation Zone is defined. It tells you what the permissible uses are, it tells you um, the, what the conservation values are, what the purpose of the zone is. Do you know how many words in 35.06 we're changing? None. We haven't proposed to change one word. Not one word of the purposes of the zone is changing. We're not changing the boundaries. We're not changing the bushfire controls. All the controls that apply to bushfires today will apply tomorrow. They must. It's mandatory. You don't get to go around it. We haven't tried to change that. In the end, we're not changing the zoning of anyone's land. What we are changing is some clauses in 21.07 that correct a few mistakes, that refer to a few, that insert a few more accurate planning terms, and we are, we are saying that we also support tourism in the RCZ. That's it. That's in, the, in, the, in the end, that's what we're doing. Now, my alternative recommendation here actually puts some words back that were proposed to take out. 
And the words that we put, I'm asking you that we put back, is that, um, find it here. While you're finding it, I might ask for an extension of time. Yeah. So, so I moved another two minutes. Oh, I'll put the motion. Motion carried. Thank you. Um, and that's putting back some specific words uh, about. Um, and read it here. It's in the motion. It's much easier if I just read it there. There's some. The words that are being added back are. Um, to protect and support the viability of existing agricultural activities, I'm, I've asked for those words to be put back in in the MSF. So the phrase will now be: the focus will be to protect and support the viability of existing agricultural activities and promote other appropriate business activities. And I think that's an important. It's important to maintain that wording in the MSS because I think that is a fundamental objective of our MSS to continue to support the agricultural activities that we have in this zone. But the reality is that the agricultural uses are dropping in this zone. We're seeing farms bulldozing fruit trees. We're seeing agricultural uses shut down. And I would argue that what we're seeing is land banking. We are seeing wealthy people buying up this land and waiting. They're not going to present, conserve the land. They're going to just hold on to it and wait till population pressures in this city in 20 years' time get people screening for development land. I would argue that we should be supporting tourism development in the, in the RCZ in a very limited number of appropriate locations with nice type wording that speaks to, um, speaks very specifically about um, sustainable business practices, that speaks very specifically about the types of physical development that can occur that tightens up the language to make sure that decisions like the one we saw at Brumby's Road are far more likely to occur so that we get continued rejection of inappropriate tourism developments. They have to be in the right location, they have to have the right design, and they have to have the right, uh, a much smaller amenity impact on the neighbouring area and on the neighbouring residents. Those are the sorts of tightening of controls that I see in the wording in the clauses. I could take you to the wording and have a rep look at it. it. Just go and look at page 228, 21044. We're saying we're adding references to earthworks and we're saying that it has to be built form, not just building form. Because built form is a much more expansive term. It's not just the building, it's the built form of the development. That's an important thing to make sure is considered. The old wording just says building. Why would you limit your, your assessment of it to the building and its impact on the environment? Surely you'd want the whole proposal to be considered. The wording here is very important. Now, sadly, I have read much of the planning scheme, and I've read this very, very thoroughly, and I'm very much convinced that what we are proposing is the right thing to do for this community. Thank I think you, the, the, the panel member let us down. Uh, they didn't know what they were talking about, and we should support this. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you. Uh, would the seconder like to speak? I don't think there's much left for me to say. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any movers against the motion? Speakers against the motion. Councillor Conlon. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councillor McLeish, for your thorough covering of the um, of the issues at hand. I guess where I and I would like to foreshadow an alternative motion. You know, clearly, a few of us have got objections. Have probably got some objections coming through um, from various groups. Unfortunately, some of these groups have implied that the council somehow has a hidden agenda about pro-development, about not protecting the green wedge. And to me, those sort of statements uh, actually diminish their argument. But because the whole crux of this, most of this amendment, is actually all about protecting the green wedge. So I don't, and this wouldn't have happened unless we had that motivation to actually protect the Greenwich. So, oh, nonetheless, even though I don't agree with their tactics of, of um, bringing down the council and, and council officers and, and trying to imply that we have a, some uh, pro-development agenda, having considered all the facts at hand, I am I'm not convinced that the panel reports 
the panel's recommendation regarding removing tourism from 2107, the references to tourism 2107, is, uh, I don't believe there's an issue with that. I believe that's actually, um, has, is more likely, on the balance of things, is more likely to protect the green wedge in the long term. So therefore, I'll be proposing an alternative motion, which is essentially to adopt the panel's report in full. And I ask uh, councillors to support that by not supporting this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any other speakers for the motion? Councillor Chen. Well, Madam Mayor, I understand that there will be increased pressure on the green edge by non-residential users, including tourism activities. But a responsible council should be capable of responding to those applications a responsible council should take proactive approach to provide clear guidance to these applications. Just like heritage protection, and I think I do think that appropriate use of these assets will have the ability to enhance the sus uh, sustainability in the long term. Council is not changing the zone of those uh, those areas. The zone we, we are not proposing to con to change the zone controls. I'm uh, overall I'm satisfied that the amendments is to introduce planning policy to adequately address tourism use and developments in green wedge area. That is in line with our green wedge action plan that I have that with me, and also our American economic development strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any further speakers against the motion? Any other speakers? Accordingly, I'm, oh, Councillor Goff. No, I'm not, I'm not. Thank you. Um, oh, would the, would the mover like to close? Madam Mayor, this is pretty simple in the end. Most of the change in 21.07 is in 21.07-6, which talks about economic development issues. It's on page 220, 32 and 233 of the paper. And if you look at the current wording, there are basically three, currently there are three simple points that talk about the objectives. They're not very broad, they're not very, they're not, they're very broad and they're not particularly specific and they don't provide great guidance to officers in assessing the economic impact of these reports. If you look at just the first one, just the first one, to encourage sustainable business opportunities which complement the scenic landscape and environmental qualities of the area. That's what it currently reads today. The, the amended one, to encourage sustainable land use and business opportunities that complement the scenic landscape and environmental qualities of the area and enhances the environmental significance, values and ecological function of the Rural Conservation Zone. That is much more specific. It puts many more hurdles in place for development. And that's just one of the changes in that particular area. If you read all of the area changes that are in there, here's another one. To ensure that commercial activities currently, it says, have minimal impact on residential and environmental amenity. The new wording, have no detrimental impact on residential and environmental amenity. I'm sorry, no detrimental impact is a fair bit better than minimal. I contend that these changes are very sound, they're very well placed. There is not extensive it, it, it support for tourism. There's minimal change. The zone itself has not been changed and the, control, the purposes of the zone have not been changed. This is, a, this is a modest and appropriate change that will encourage development in certain locations that is not just agricultural and that will improve the green wedge in the longer term and enhance the financial basis for its conservation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Those against? Motion carried. Item 10.2, the Yarra River Corridor Concept Plan, Manningham. Do I have a mover? Councillor Goff. Moved uh, the adjusted. The alternative motion. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'll move that. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kleinert. 
Would the mover like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And uh, this is a report. There have been a number over history. There have been a number of reports, and I just can't think of the name of the, the lady that wrote one of the earlier ones in the in the 70s, which talked about that Yarra River precinct area, and the name on the top. Uh, that the Arab Prison area and heights and what sort of development should go in there. And it was used by State Government and Council to get develop, guide development for quite some period of time along the area, including uh, sight lines from the river uh, to what the built form could be. Um, I'll think of the name of the report later. The State Government have been uh, working on a number of uh, reports for that particular area and in fact are still coming up with a uh, with a uh, concept for, for the Yarra, which the state government are working on. Uh, we also have uh, a Yarra River um, uh, Pauline land use uh, plan, the state government have got report into that, and that'll bring that together too. Uh, and also it'll bring together the Yarra River action plan, uh, up the water and, and activities around the Yarra River. Yarra River is probably one of our uh, biggest assets in, in our municipality. And what Council have done is, is looked along the length and breadth, triggered in many ways by Nella coming in and putting a road through part of it, has triggered, I suppose, responses, responses from other municipalities such as Burundara that might use our land to make uh, things for themselves on, on our portions of land, but which pushes some of our activities off land that is currently being used for the community. There's one thing that Manningham lacks, and you've heard from me before, Madam Mayor, we lack a lot of flat ground. We can build tennis courts, we can build basketball stadiums, but you can't build football and soccer pitches, football and soccer pitches, on hilly areas. It costs an absolute fortune for cut and fill, and then it doesn't really look very good, and it denudes the landscape. We don't have those areas, except Right on our doorstep, all along the Yarra River, there are river plains. A lot of them we use, some of them we use, but a lot of them, and the government, the state government, are, have got public acquisition overlays over most of it. There are a couple of uh, private land developments they don't have a public acquisition overlay over, but they do over most of it. And this report, Madam Mayor, is really for us to clarify and to reinforce with the state government, and it is complementary in, in most in regards to the state government's objectives on activities. I'm not going to go through each of the things we've put there. We've done. We've also put another um, bridge crossing, a pedestrian bridge crossing across the river, because it is a barrier. And if we can get people moving across that river, albeit not for motor vehicles, but for personal travel and transport, for the people of uh, Pauline. A decent pedestrian bridge across the river, just up from where the, the road bridge is, would be great for anyone that could put people living in Bulleen just as close as people living in Banuel to Heidelberg Station. So, so there are great reasons to get those networks going. And we've also got the fact that uh, we've also, which we've just added in from the original report, is uh, the pathways, pedestrian pathways around the river uh, south of Manningham Road and going in and around. Now, they're important to include. But we've identified areas of land that we say that we need for our community. And indeed, we need more than that. We need more than what we've identified here. In fact, really, we're looking at campaigning to actually have in public use, whether we own it or the state government or the federal government own it, we don't really care. But for active recreation on a lot of the land, and passive recreation within the close to the river environs. And that's a very important thing for us to be able to access. There are areas down there where there's a seed farm. There are areas down there where there's a block driving range that we've got into here. There are also a couple of other blocks of land that are available along that uh, passage. But it, we're saying that we want as much land as possible utilised. Because if the, if the state government or anyone wants to keep on increasing population and population in the middle suburbs and if that's if that's the aim then we need that flat area and those recreational areas we've got them at the moment 
that the percentage of recreational areas we've got, we've got a lot of bushland in Manningham. We have a lot of land, land for the public in the, in the non-urban area, but we don't have very much that is usable by our community on a regular basis for active sport. So, Madam Mayor, I can uh, I hope everyone supports our submission. Thank you, Councillor Goff. With the second, I'd like to speak. Yes. Councillor Kleinert. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I seek that the um, councillors endorse the uh, Yarra, River, Yarra River Corridor Plan as amended. Uh, now, this is uh, the plan is for the use of the recreation and open space along the Yarra Corridor of um, Glen Road and Tuxedo Road. Um, this doesn't address the light industrial zone um, or the Pinon Creek Trail, which will be addressed in a later date. This concept plan takes into consideration the likely impact of uh, Bulleen Park and its users. So we know that um, the front oval of Bulleen Park, which is currently the home of the Yarra Junior Football League, um, it's anticipated that half of that oval will go and um, no longer will it be able to be used by football. Now you can see by the map, the refit configuration, there's some changes there. And again, as we've heard earlier, by some question time, yeah, these are concept plans, and again, uh, we're just at this point right now in uh, protecting um, what is ours and, and making the best decisions as they come um, before us. So, this is in stark contrast to the Burundara Council who has resolved uh, that they think that they can refigure Bulleen Park um, with its public golf course uh, known as the Freeway Golf Course, after it has moved the Boradara Tennis Complex onto the golf course. So a lot of people think that that tennis precinct is actually ours. No, it's Boradara's land. So we stand affirm to affirm our words. That's one thing. 70% now, Councillor Goff. I actually didn't know this Councillor Goff, Madam Mayor. 70% of Manningham residents use, the pa use passive sport, walking with the dogs, cycling, it's really, it's high and actually I think all of us councillors actually partake in, in that. So, um, the interesting part about um, wanting to keep that, with Borondara's proposed plan, they're saying, see you later, to uh, some of our passive sport, and I would call um, the, what do we call it, the archery, the Euro modelers, aero, aero modelers of which we've visited. It's amazing. Now, if they take our land, there's no plan for where they go. They would be, if they've got to relocate, they've got to relocate, guess what, over 20, 20 kilometres away. It's 23 kilometres, I think it is, we worked out, um, away. So that's down to, um, and there is some available land down in somewhere in Carrum Downs, 48 kilometres away. Um, the club caters also for a lot of community members who we've seen organise sport, such as um, field sports in that area as well. This is the interesting part about the current golf course is an 18 hole, 68 par. I've learned a lot about golf recently. Um, it can it can be refigured. Now this option only becomes not feasible when the Burundara uh, tennis complex is to move over. But if we consider that there are five other golf courses within 10 minute drive of the freeway golf course, and two of them are public courses. The state government actually released a paper in 2017 titled Planning for Golf in Victoria and actually found that golf is declining. And golfers want a faster game, more inclined to play nine holes. Any of you play golf? Do you play golf, man? Okay, I hope I'm on the right path here. So, uh, and in fact, uh, Burundara Council's recreation strategy discusses uh, participation, walking, swimming, cycling, going to the gym, there's no reference to golf. So what they're wanting to do is take some of our land for a declining sport, uh, which will inhibit us from uh, looking after our residents. 70%, and I would say it's even more, walking, cycling, it's a beautiful, as Councillor Goffer said, it's a beautiful area, we can't lose it. So the proposed plan that we're endorsing tonight, I think is an absolutely exciting plan for Manningham, which explores um, the Bulleen Park to Fins Reserve to open up the Yarra to our residents for more walking, for more jogging, for more experiences in the open space, which is absolutely beautiful. I know that Tom
time is um, we run out of time, but I just urge, urge us all to endorse this plan um, with respect to uh, what it entails um, with the amended um, bridge, the, ad the addition of the bridge, which is a fantastic idea, I think. Thank you, Councillor Clonan. Are there any speakers against the motion? Would any other um, councillors like to speak? Councillor Zephyropoulos. Um, just a, a few comments. Uh, I'd like to congratulate uh, the officers involved in this uh, report. It's fundamentally important for us to uh, identify at the earliest uh, the options and then indicate the preferred options. Um, and I think this paper uh, comes in uh, a few months after we prepared uh, the options, not a proposal this paper. And it does uh, identify the adverse impact as that uh, uh, the North East is going to have on, on our municipality, but it also identifies possible solutions you might have for that impact. The only thing I would uh, suggest, and I think that is intended by the, the officers, is to leave this as a dynamic plan that we continuously change because we still don't know uh, the definitive plans of uh, the authority that is planning this. It, it might take a year or two before we're able to identify things, but the, this uh, plan uh, allows us to begin our advocacy, particularly with state government and some of the state agencies. Now, the only thing, the only specific thing I would request on the basis of the question we, are, we heard before is let us explore what land is available before we decide then which code is going to go where. Because if, if it appears that we're dislocating a particular code and leaving all the others to enjoy their current facilities, that might not look very fair. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any, any other speakers who would like to speak to this motion? I have a question first one there. Yes, Councillor McLeish. The uh, question is about Pauline Park itself and the current uses and proposed uses. So um, we've already heard some questions this evening about the, uh, the round ball game as it's played down there. My question is, do we, would it be, would we intend, as, as per our normal practice, to actually undertake some master planning for the Pauline Park site to look at current and future uses when we uh, actually get down to the brass tacks about how we're going to deliver sporting precinct, that sporting precinct. Thank you, Councillor. I'll direct that uh, question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr. Corondas. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, look, definitely, if, um, as we've said, it's a concept plan, it's a dynamic plan, so as we move forward with more detailed planning, Council Locks in a particular position, that will be the next phase to do comprehensive master planning for the different components. Thank you. Any other speakers? Um, oh, would you like to speak, Councillor Lynch? Um, Madam Mayor, I fully support what's being proposed here in terms of the wider concept. I think um, the, the elements that are represented here along the Yarra River corridor as far as they go in terms of some new infrastructure and in terms of parkland and recreation pieces, I think it's great. Um, and these are, after all, some of the things that we can have some impact on. The biggest concern I have to remain, and, and another example of that is for the park and ride at Bulleen, which is, I think, uh, a great addition and it would significantly complement um, the busway that is proposed at, under the NELP plan. The biggest concern I have in the end of the area is the local businesses that are going to be impacted and the construction impact of the North East Link itself. Mm -hmm. These are two very serious concerns for our community. The impact, if we're talking about over 100 businesses, 500 people down there working in, in that location, um, they're facing a very, very uncertain future under NELP at this point. They can't sell their businesses in effect. They can't invest in them. They're paralysed, in essence. 
Now, I appreciate that we don't get to decide what happens to those businesses and we don't have a great deal of influence on their behalf, but in the end, they're employing people in our community and they're paying rates in our community. And I hope that we as a council can continue to advocate on their behalf to, to the state government to ensure that um, a minimalist approach is taken to the impact on those businesses. That's not just in terms of the design of the built of the tunnel itself, of the of the of the North East Link itself, but it's also just the basic things of how it's constructed. In the end, don't, where are they going to bring all the spoil out when they start these tunnel boring machines out? Where's all the spoil going to go? How many trucks a day are going to come out of that out of that site hauling spoil out of it? Are we going to see hundreds of heavy trucks a day charging through Bulleen? Because we know Bulleen Road at the moment, yeah, from a traffic too. perspective, it's really not the best, you might say. You could it. say it's awful. Where are those hundreds of trucks going to go? So there's a lot to be done here in terms of minimising the impact on our community and considering what will happen. So as far as this concept plan goes for the parklands, great, but there's still a lot of work for us to do with the council. Thank you, Councillor Nablish. Are there any other speakers? Would, the, would you like to close? Certainly, Councillor Goff. Yes. Anyway, this, this is really a, a plan that we've come up with. And in fact, I'll, I'll focus uh, Councillor Cleisha's attentions to page 274, where it's got the picture of the industrial area. And the caption under that is to retain the use of this area as the same sort of function in the future some sort of uh, So that has been expressly expressed in that uh, into the future of that particular area. And uh, so therefore this this is uh, in, in many ways advocating for a continuation of activities there and that is part and parcel, not omitted from this part and parcel of this application. Thank you Councillor Goff. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Agenda item 11, City Services, 11.1. 2018 to 19 Capital Works Program. End of De December status report. Do I have a mover? Councillor Goff. Moved as on the paper. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Haynes, would the mover like to speak? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just very quickly. Uh, this is a report that comes to the Council. This report is really saying how we've gone in Capital Works up until the end of December. I think it's the end of December, um, the uh, last year, and uh, what, what, we've, what we've spent and what we're going. Uh, the report's pretty good, really. Uh, we're, uh, we budgeted to spend 35.7, and with our printing presses, we've been able to manage to spend 49. We're going to be on track to spend 49.4, or something like that, million dollars. So uh, there's some extra money that's come in which is aiming into this account for Capital Works, which is a major important thing for local governments. Uh, already there, there were 79, there were 79 uh, projects identified in our Capital Works program. 11 have been completed. Uh, I think we've got 10 to start, and the remainder, I think, are um, uh, uh, in progress. And, and of course, it all sets it out. This report also sets out transfers and uh, programs that have been funded uh, to get the work going, and it's all outlined there in the report of act actually money being spent uh, or directed in particular projects. And this is reporting back to us how that money that money is being spent. So, a uh, great deal of work goes on every year. It's a big budget, but there are lots of programs that are done, and uh, the aim is to really get it up there. And I know you can't get 100% done in a year because it feels like sometimes later or so weather can affect by a few months, but within the first couple of months into the next year, everything usually is completed. So uh, congratulations to the staff that are continuing uh, working on there, and uh, I congratulate the council for uh, supporting a very high capital works program, which is important. Thank you, Councillor Goff. Would you second like to speak? No, thank you. Any speakers against the motion? Councillor Haynes, would you like to speak? Motion carried. Item number 12, shared services. There are no reports. Item number 13, Chief Executive Officer, 
Madigan quarterly report, quarter two, October to December 2018. Do I have a mover? Councillor Clonan. As a uh, recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? No. Okay. Councillor Haynes. Would the mover like to speak? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Just that um, the report, it's a very good report. Uh, it's detailed, it's designed, makes it very easy to read. And I think uh, that's, uh, that's a, a positive thing for uh, any resident that wants to understand more on what's going on uh, with, with Manningham. Uh, the incorporation <coughs> of the, the CEO's KPI, once they come about, it, it just, it's a, it's a very good document and it really shows the, the healthy seed that our city lives in. So I um, want to uh, say thank you and uh, recognise the officers that have put work um, to make it the document that it is I think it's um it's brilliant, including the uh, major initiatives of uh, the company works, the finance, the corporate staff, the performance, and um, and more. So, thank you, um, Councillor Haynes. With a second, I like to speak. And thank you, Madam Mayor. Any other speakers? Oh. Yes, Councillor Zakaropoulos. Uh, th there's not much to say about the report. It's another great report. Uh, I would just simply like to point out that an area that we have uh, not done very well in the past has been the 60-day uh, requirement of completing applications. And I see the graph here, it's going up and up, and this is good news, and, and the number of applications uh, we are managing to complete uh, before the 60 days expire has increased. That means uh, Fewer uh, applications are going straight to Vicar, which is a good thing. So I can imagine that graph will continue to improve. I haven't seen any extra resources being put into the area. I think it's simply efficiency the way we are doing things. So congratulations to the staff for that. Thank you, Councillor. I'll now put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item 13.2, Record of Assembly of Councillors. Do I have a mover? Councillor Galvali. I move that the recommendation mover. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Conlon. Would the mover like to speak? Uh, just short. Uh, I'd just ask, like to ask Council to note the Record of Assembly for the following meetings that, that, um, that the records be incorporated into the minutes of the Council meeting. Thank you. Would the second you like to speak? No, I think that would be all. Accordingly, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. 13.3, sealing uh, documents for sealing. Do I have a mover? Councillor Haynes. I move the alternative motion be adopted. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Do I have a second date? Councillor Conlon. Do you like to speak? Um, just to say that I'm glad I don't have to read it all out because it has been distributed to the public, so um, hopefully as read. Excellent. Does the second you like to speak? No, thank you. I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. Item 14, urgent business. There, there are no items of urgent business. Item number 15, councillors question time. Are there any questions from councillors? Yes. Councillor Chen. Yes. Councillor Chen. I'm um, the mayor, and uh, Mary Hank experiencing population growth, and Doncaster Hill Activity Centre has been identified as the main focus of residential development and high density living. But all the mature trees were removed by developers to make ways for driveway, and there is no consistent and visually integrated streetscapes. How council is to enhance our streetscapes across Manningham, especially in our highly high density area and along Main Road? Are we going to wait until this area fully developed and then we consider our streetscapes or can we be, do anything sooner? Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Chen. I'll direct that question to the Director of City Planning and Community, Mr. Grumbus. 
Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, as Council is aware, we're, we're about to embark on a review, review of the Doncaster Hill strategy, um, and our um, city uh, services team is also in the process of reviewing a street tree uh, policy. So my aim would be to look at this issue because I think it is a very important issue as part of those two processes. Thank you. Um, are there, I have a subsequent question for that. Yes, Councillor, yes. Councillor Haynes. Thank you. Yes. Just to that, to that point, um, um, my understanding, Madam Mayor, through you, Madam Mayor, is that we do um, deal with our streetscape often and we, uh, as trees are taken down, we do plant new trees once the development and the crossovers are done, that we're not just waiting for when we do reassess the situation as far as the Doncaster Road and Doncaster Hill, but, but we are dealing with trees quite often and some of them have been taken down mature ones, not just because of developments, but because of um, things that are going wrong with them and, and also um, they're lifting our drains and things. So my understanding is that we are dealing with trees constantly and we are planting hundreds of trees um, throughout the year around the Manningham, including in our intense area. So I'm just asking for clarification as far as the streetscape goes. I think we're dealing with it daily, so please, clearly I'm not The question was about design. I, I, I'll direct the question to Mr. Krampus. Um, uh, thank you for the question. Through you, Madam Mayor, that, that's fundamentally correct. I suppose what I was saying is that there's an opportunity to take a strategic view. So we do all the things you said. Um, we put refinements and, and we require offsets and we put a value on the street trees to discourage the loss of significant street trees, etc. Um, but there's, there is also now an opportunity to look at a more strategic, long term um, approach as well. Thank you for clarifying that. Councillor Con uh, Councillor Conlon, you have a question. Well, this is basically to reiterate the question that I uh, brought up in the um, in question about Old Warren by Road. Um, and what can be done, and I'll sit on notice obviously, but what can be done to improve traffic and to put pressure on big roads to be such an road? Mm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Connell, as that question will be taken on notice. Councillor Bob, you have a question? I have a question, Madam Mayor, and are you aware that Manningham actually has a streetscape uh, plan? Are you aware that Manningham has uh, had a study? This is one big study that takes an overview look of the whole area and looks at its streetscapes and, make, and has recommendations, types of trees in the particular precincts and areas. And Doncaster Hill is one of them, but we've already got all of that documentation. So we do have it all there. It might come up for some sort of review, but that strategic planning has been going on for the last 15 to 20 years. And we've got the documents here, and uh, if you just have to look up uh, a streetscape stuff, and, and the neighbourhood, the precincts, it divides our areas up into all these different precincts and it talks about the character and what is to be planned. I'm just wondering if we're aware of that. Well, we're certainly aware now. So thank, thank you, you very, very much, much. <laughs> Councillor Goff. But I'll now, oh, <laughs> Councillor Galbally, you have a question. This is about trees to from the, uh, all our girls, um, because I, I'm actually uh, more, asking more about what uh, Councillor Chen was asking for. And am I right to think that what Councillor Chen was asking for was a more structured plan to put more greenery in, in, in the way of trees and structured um, planning in Doncaster Hill and in our high density areas, which um, possibly do with more trees in the plan. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Galbley. I'll direct that question to Mr. Corumbus. Sorry, I'm unclear. Well, I think that's for the Council. Oh, that's just clarified. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah. Councillor Chen. Sorry. Yeah. I understand that often, even uh, when there is a development for those apartments, there will be always a landscaping plan and there will be trees in place. And I understand that. But often when we look at uh, uh, when we look across the mannequin, the streets, the main streets, and the the and the, the, the median strips, uh, the median strips, 
and sometimes it's a little uh, a, a few trees there, a few trees there, and uh, there is no uniform or just no design at all. Everyone come from another municipality, come to Manhattan will not have a wow effect, and just. Just, just, just no, just not right. There's no design at all. Of course, we have the streetscape plans, but surely the current situation across Manhattan. I just, uh, I just take uh, Doncaster Hill as an example, but surely a lot of main roads, Doncaster roads in particular, and other main roads like main roads, we don't have that well effect. So that is why I asked the question in terms of strategic. Uh, planning, and we have any other plans to do it nicely. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Chen. Do you think we have explored the issue of trees quite well, significantly? I, I, I'm just wondering whether we're aware of the, the whole fact that all of those, main, those roads yeah. are big growth roads, and Council, back in 1999, went through hoops and everything to be able to plant trees in there. And any tree that you see up the middle of Doncaster Road, in the sides, uh, Williamson's Road, uh, Bulleen Road, Thompson's, Thompson's yeah. Road, all of the main roads, all of those have been planned and planted and are growing uh, in, in there uh, with the work and the strategic plan. And Vic Roads are a group that will tell you that if there's a leading strip up the road, you can't just have continuous trees all the way or going across because you need sight lines on main roads. And so we have explored that. If some have died and we haven't replanted them, perhaps we need to get permission to go into there. But that, for those particular areas, are not council land, and we did do that job. Uh, thank you, Councillor Goff. We seem to have um, uh, yeah, gone into a discussion rather than questions. So I think, I think that is uh, I'm very I'm, I think we're all aware of that. And so accordingly, I will I will move to the next item, which is uh, confidential reports. For the mayor, I would like to move a motion for item 16.1 uh, 16 to be considered in open meeting. <coughs> yes. That council declares the information contained in item 16.1, draft community facilities access and concession policy is no longer confidential information and the report be considered in the open meeting of council. Thank you, councillor. Do I have a second to that motion? Councillor Haynes. Second that motion? Good. Um, all those in favour? Motion carried. Item 16.1, Draft Community Facilities Access and Concession Policy. Do I have a mover? Councillor Haynes. I move the recommendation be adopted. Thank you, Councillor. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Galvaline. Would the mover like to speak? Um, just to state that I'm very happy that this confidential document is going out for public consultation and that there's a media and, and, um, and communication strategy and that this document um, will be discussed at length. Obviously, it's going to um, affect a lot of the community with um, the different facilities that are used, and I'm looking forward to hearing the result when it does come to council. So all the other dates are in the documents, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Haynes. Would the seconder like to speak? Are there any speakers against the motion? Are there any further speakers? You have a question? Yes, Councillor Zaporopoulos. Officers have already worked out uh, the suggested Canberra clusters uh, on the basis of the consultation side. Would we be willing to reorganise those and produce new ones? I can answer that, yes. We're going to get Yes. That's As councillors will reconsider it after the community consultation. The, 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 the feedback from the community. So, so that uh, when we conduct the consultation, we make it quite clear that nothing here is said in the That's the Yes. It's a, it's a given, Councillor Zapropoulos, but it's, thank you. Any other speakers? No? Accordingly, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Motion carried. And as that is the final item, I'll now close the meeting.